my name is Sam and I'm with the events calendar and in this video I'm going to walk you through the settings for the events calendar and events calendar pro so to get to your settings you're going to go to the events icon over here and then go down to settings and then the first tab is general and you have a couple different options to adjust here the first is to toggle if the events calendar link is at the bottom of your calendar or not. And then under the viewing section, you can change the slug of your calendar and single events page. Uh, you have options for whether the events can be included in your main blog loop. If you want to condense your events in the series, which means that the only the next upcoming event in the series will show on your calendar and then toggling that front end condensed event series toggle. You give your users the option to do that. You can also enable the month view cache, which could improve your calendar speed. Then the next section is editing. So this is different options for how you edit your calendar. And then maintenance, you have options here for if you want to have your events be moved to the trash after they are X amount of time old. That helps keep your calendar moving quickly and speeds of your site. <laughs> Same thing for permanently deleting the events older than X amount of time. And then these settings are for the default, how many events to create when you're creating recurring events. The merge duplicate venues and organizers is a great way to condense if you have a couple different copies of venues or organizers, then it smashes it all into one if they are exactly the same. Okay, the next tab is this display tab. And this gives you options for how your calendar appears on the front end. So there's different options for the style sheet used for event templates, and then different options for which event template to use. You can enable different event views, and you do have to have at least one of these selected, but you can choose as many as you like. The default view, this is how your calendar first loads, so you can choose any of the views that you have selected, and then you have a different option. This is with Pro to select the default mobile view, and then the month view events per day. Defaults to three, this is how many events are shown on each day of the calendar. And then the number of events to show per page is when in list view. You can also choose the default settings for if you show the comments on event pages, the event search bar at the top of your calendar, hide related events, and then hide weekends on week view. That would just show Monday through Friday. And then the next section is date and time. So this is how you format the dates and times show on your calendar. And then currency. So in this example, I don't have event tickets set up. So then the events will show how much they cost at the door. This is not for configuring tickets. So like you wouldn't sell the tickets through your site. This would be just to let people know how much money to bring to the event. So you can set that up here. And then maps is something that you can set up with an API key so that you have a little more functionality there. But this shows where your events are if you have a venue linked to an event. And then additional content. You can change where this displays and then just like if you wanted to add a little blurb or something about your event. Default content is if you wanted to speed things up when you're creating events and just have things ready to go when you start an event, then you can set that up here. So either an organizer, a venue, or an address if you like have the same place that all your events are happening and this could be really helpful and then additional fields this is an option to if you have custom fields that you want to have for each event when you're creating an event then you can set that up in this tab and then <laughs> filter the filters tab is if you want to look into our filter bar option this gives you control over filtering your events. If you have a lot of events, and this is really helpful to filter down and help people find what they're looking for. The licenses tab is where you would add your premium plugin licenses. 
So that's where that would go. And then integrations is where you would set up different apps that can integrate with the events calendar, such as Meetup, Eventbrite, or Google Maps. And then finally, imports is another option that we have if you have Event Aggregator, which is a way of importing events from different sources. Cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.